everybody, it's Miss Dupree. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. You remember from our earlier Earth Layers lesson that one way to divide the Earth is into the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. But scientists have another way to divide Earth, and it's very, very similar, but just a little bit different. And so for today's lesson, we're not going to worry about the core at all. We're only going to be concentrating on Earth's rocky layers. So the top layer is called the lithosphere. And the word litho means stone. So the lithosphere contains all of the really hard rock. Now if you look here on this side, the composition of layers, here's our crust, is this area right here. Over on the other side, what are called the mechanical layers, the lithosphere is this section here. So if you look, if you pull it over to the other side, you'll see that the lithosphere contains the crust, but it also contains part of the mantle. That's because the very upper part of the mantle is still cool enough to remain solid, hard rock. So it's considered part of the lithosphere. The lithosphere is any part of the rock that's hard, okay? Underneath the lithosphere is the asthenosphere. And astheno means soft or weak. So this is gonna be that softer rock that's been heated up just enough that it can be squished and moved. And now the asthenosphere is this layer right here. So you'll see it includes the rest of, you know, that upper part of the mantle. And then underneath the asthenosphere is a layer called the mesosphere. But we're not going to really be looking at that layer, so don't even worry about remembering its name. We're going to take a look first at the lithosphere. There was a time early in Earth's life when it was molten, which means that it was hot, melted, gooey rock and over time it started to cool. Now if you've ever baked a cake and waited for it to cool down, you should know that it cools on the outside first. And even when the outside feels cool, the inside remains hot for a longer time. And it's the same way with Earth. As Earth cooled down, the outside cooled first. And as it cooled, it formed this hard, solid, rocky crust. But here's what's happ what happened next. If you ever baked a cake that came out like this, sometimes as it cools, cracks form on the outer surface. The same thing happened to Earth. As Earth cooled and formed that hard, rocky lithosphere, it cracked into several huge chunks. And we call these chunks of lithosphere tectonic plates. So the lithosphere is actually made of many massive chunks called the tectonic plates. And what's interesting is that Earth is still cooling very, very, very slowly. And as it continues to cool over millions and billions of years, the lithosphere layer of that really solid hard rock is just going to keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker. So the lithosphere contains two types of crust. We learned that the oceanic crust is the crust that holds the ocean on top of it. This type of crust is very thin, very heavy, very, very dense rock. And it also is Earth's newest rock. In fact, oceanic crust is being made now. It's constantly being made. And we'll learn more about that later. Continental crust is the crust that makes up Earth's continents. This rock is going to be much thicker but it's also less dense, and it is also much, much, much older, some of Earth's oldest crust. So let's take a look at Earth's tectonic plates. Earth is divided into six really just massively huge plates, which are called the major plates. And then it's got actually a bunch of smaller plates that are called the minor plates. The only plates that I want you to know are the six major plates. I do want you to be able to identify them, 
but luckily they're super easy to remember. And that's because they're named after whatever continents or oceans they're holding. So right here, for example, we have the Pacific plate and it's holding the Pacific Ocean on top of it. So it's gonna contain that really thin oceanic crust that lies underneath the Pacific Ocean. And the Pacific plate is actually the largest tectonic plate on Earth. It's about 103 million square kilometers. And it's over here too, because if you think about it, Earth is round, so if we wrap this flat map around, these two parts are going to join into one. The North American plate, which is here, it holds the continent of North America and also part of the northern Atlantic Ocean here to the east. So the North American plate has continental and oceanic crust. The South American plate is the same way. It holds here the continent of South America, but it also holds the Southern Atlantic Ocean to the east. So it has both types of crust as well. Same with the African plate. Here it holds the continent of Africa, but you can see it's got parts of the Atlantic Ocean to the west and the Indian Ocean to the east. So again, continental and oceanic crust. The Indo-Australian plate is named because it contains the continent of Australia as well as India up here. So this is going to be continental crust, but then here's the rest of the Indian Ocean. So that Indo-Australian plate actually has a lot of oceanic crust that it's holding. And then finally, up here, we have the Eurasian plate, which holds the continents of Europe and Asia. Now this is mostly continental crust. This is a very large continent. It does contain a little bit of oceanic crust here underneath the Atlantic Ocean. So as long as you know your major world geography, it's easy to remember the names of the major plates. But the thing is, the tectonic plates don't just sit there. They're actually moving around really, really slowly, only a few centimeters per year, or about as fast as your fingernails grow. And this map shows the direction that some of the different plates move. And as you see, they're kind of moving in all different directions. But how do they move? Well, that's because of the asthenosphere. So your tectonic plates are floating on top of the asthenosphere. Remember, the asthenosphere is made of that softer rock. Now, it's not liquid. It's still a solid, but it's a solid that's softer and able to move. It's very similar to Play-Doh or clay or cupcake frosting. These are all solids that you can squeeze and bend and mold into new shapes. The asthenosphere is like that. It can ooze really slowly, and as the softer rock in the asthenosphere moves and flows here, the tectonic plates that are floating on top move with it. And this is what we modeled with our slime and pennies activity. The slime repre represented that softer moving asthenosphere, and the pennies represented the tectonic plates that were floating on top getting pulled apart. So then what makes the asthenosphere move? Well, that's the result of a process called convection currents. And we're gonna be learning more about convection currents soon. But basically, convection currents are the movements of substances that are caused by heat. You've got heat from Earth's core moving up through the asthenosphere, and it causes the asthenosphere to move. And you're gonna learn that convection currents are kind of this up-down movement. And as the convection currents move the asthenosphere, the tectonic plates floating on top are gonna to move along with it. And as the tectonic plates start moving, and you remember from that map, they're moving in all different directions, this causes them to bump and grind against each other or to separate and move apart from each other. 
and this causes a lot of different types of activity on Earth's surface. And we'll be learning more about that in later lessons. But that is it for this lesson. You should have your graphic organizer completely filled out and you should understand the basic information on this slide. If you have any questions, write them down so that you can ask me in class when we review. Good job, everybody. See you next time.